So there it is, the crowd settled down, and one thing must be stated, Cork, vocally anyway, Peter, seem to have a much bigger support here than Kerry. Yes, in fact, to be disappointed with the crowd, it, it, it's nothing compared to what it will be next week um, in the Armagh Dublin game. But looking down in the field, I mean, there's an awful lot of interesting one-to-ones here. Um, newcomers like Owen Brosnan uh, on the Kerry team, John Sheehan on the Kerry team, uh, against the season campaigners of Joe Kavanagh and people like that. Um, it's going to be very interesting. So Brian White of Wexford, who refereed the Don Kerry and Cork Munster semi-final, gets this game underway, and the first blow falls to Seamus Moynihan. Moynihan out in front of Colin Corkery, and two things are clear. One is that Corkery is the intended target man, and two, that Moynihan is very much on his toes. Sean O'Sullivan, one of five new players in the side. Plays it back to Doro Kanaja. Kanaja shoots from the sideline. What about that for a start for Kay? What about that for Kanaja? Three points against Galway, and he scored in 34 seconds. A magnificent score, and a quick kick out taken by the Cork players. They're not going to hang about either. They're going to try and respond as quickly as they can. Sean Levis. Long ball. Philip Clifford collects it. He had a man moving inside. That man was Graham Canty. Canty, tackled by Fitzmaurice. Gets it back again to the corner forward. Excellent black down on Fanon Murray. And it's noticeable that Moynan was in again. The substitutes there, Alan Cronin. The ball's beaten away from him by Mark O'Shea. And Kerry regroup again. Very fast pace already. Sean O'Sullivan. Second to be the fastest player on the K side, wins all the sprints and training. That's a lovely angle ball, dropping into the path of Cooper, who was isolated inside the 45 metre line. And Cooper, just look at this for balance and poise. And what about that? Speaking to Mike Sheehy this morning, and one of the things that Sheehy was worried about was if Cooper could do it again on the big stage. Well, I think that answers that question. He is some player. Yes, and he had to win that ball under serious pressure from. Um, the number five, Owen Sexton, has moved back back into to Markham. Uh, and the composure he showed when he did manage to win the ball. Very similar start to the start against Galway. Well, Park will not be reminded what way that game finished, but I'm sure Larry Tompkins and Co. and Mickey Niblack will be endeavouring to make sure that that doesn't happen. Park need a good start. They didn't get it. And back come the Kingdom again. Kerry, who have won. 50 All-Ireland semi-finals and a really start on fire again Cooper uses the wind remember Kerry are playing with the breeze throws that ball across to Kanaja and runs back to Tecla to turn himself Cooper again but this time he proves that even he is fallible puts it to the right of the post and wide but it's the way that these boys move in the ball so balanced and the ball is just floated in front of Peter Cooper for the watch well that's the point I was going to make to me the ball has been got into the, the Kerry forward line so far I know there's only a couple of minutes gone but it has been unbelievable and if you need to come out and won that ball turned round Cooper made a run out to the wing signalled where he wanted the ball and the ball was put on a sixpence to him Kevin O'Dwyer then certainly the most overworked of the two keepers that's a great take by Graham Canty Martin Cronin Nemo Rangers player bottomed up by three Kerry players Excellent tackling. No one put a hand on him. Just swarmed all over him like a rush. Yes, well, there seems to there's plenty of class oozing from this Kerry team at the minute. There's also a ferocity in their tackling. Do you remind you of the Dublin forwards the way they tackled against um, against Tony Gall that day? That, that diagonal ball to Colin Cooper as well. He, he moves very well off the ball. Captain to Cooper to Liam Hassett. And a man from Lawn Rangers puts Kerry into a three-point lead. Three minutes and 40 seconds on the clock, and Kerry's precision passing and finishing is certainly a joy to behold on this year from Cork. Yeah, they've been allowed that little bit of time to pick people out, and I mean, Kerry kicked the ball very, very well. That was a great take by Liam Canty. Little nudge from Darrow Shea, but Canty didn't mind. There's what's now known as the famous bounce of Pro Park, but makes no difference to the Kerry defence. No build up again, O'Shea collects it, gets away from Canty, a little bit of space, and then it's a high dropping ball, more hopeful than the previous ones that have gone in. Canadians there, gets it, transfers it inside again, 
and this is really, really easy as far as Kerry are concerned. And this time, it's Mike Frank Russell, the full forward line of Kerry, have come together, and in four and a half minutes, they have all scored. Add that to Liam Hassan score, and Kerry are leading by four points to nil. There's four different scorers in four minutes. Uh, but I mean, Garus, you had loads of time in the middle of the field there. I reckon while Cork are winning their fair share of ball in the middle third of the field, uh, the pressure is not being applied on the Kerry players the same way as it is being applied to the Cork players. But the worrying thing was that it was a high, hopeful type of ball within, and yet Okanaja still was able to get it. Now, as if things couldn't go bad enough, Cork are. Megan, I think it's a blood substitution. The man that's come in for Cork at the moment is John Muskella. So John Muskella is on. Cork certainly need a little bit of divine guidance from someone. Collected by Joe Kavanagh. And now this is what Cork have been waiting for. Corkery. He's got his own bit of trick. He drills it through the middle. Collected very quickly by Philip Clifford. But there's the difference. Clifford immediately closed down. No time to dwell on the ball. As we look there at Martin Cronin. I remember since brother who came in for Morris McCarthy. And now it's Martin Cronin being worked on in the tunnel area. Larry Tompkins will be worried, Jimmy. They've had a couple of chances on goal but they've been under so much pressure and so rushed that they haven't even threatened the target. The strength of Doro O'Shea and Gail Talk player just leaving the Cork defence for dead. O'Shea steadies, pops it over the bar. This is vintage Kerry. They left Brendan Jero Sullivan in his wake, popped it over the bar, and Doro O'Shea scores his third point of this year's championship. Yes, very seldom you see that in the modern game. A player uh, catching his own kick out, running it into the field and sticking it over the bar. Uh, fine feet nowadays. Muskella trying to get Cork on the move. Alan Cronin, he of the, the ponytail, leads it to the substitute again. And that's Ronan McCarthy, the Douglas player, drives it in. Excellent work by Mark O'Shea. Philip Clifford allows it to drop over the end line. And this is a bit of a break for Cork, and it's a 45. Yes, but it was interesting that, Jimmy. If it's only when you have Colin Cork here on your team that can you afford to allow a ball to go over the end line as a forward. I mean, he could have picked that ball up, I thought, and created a better scoring opportunity than most other county teams would from a 45, 20 metres in from the sideline. But that doesn't take into account Colin Cork. Really. It shows you how much has been left on this man's shoulders. Not stab it. Still in play, however. Kept in this time by Tomas O'Shea. Crossfield ball by Seamus Moynihan. Moynihan full back, or must be remembered that in the replay against Cork, Moynihan came out to midfield, something that backfired on them. As Cork won that, the Madonna win the monster title. Liam Hassett holds it up. But cut out this time by Graham Canty. Bantley Blues player trying to get into Brendan Jero Sullivan. His father won an All Ireland medal with Cork in '73. This time it's O'Shea again. Lovely delivered ball through the middle, held up by Canadia. Looking for someone to move. He's got a man in the overlap. Donald Daly. Kerry taking their time. And once again, all the time in the world. Kerry supporters love it and there's the reason for their affection at the moment Mike Frank Russell who scored in every match hit second and Cork reintroduced Martin Cronin the run from the middle of the field by Donald Daly created the opening there Jimmy but it was Mike Frank Russell coming in from a tight angle maybe he thought about goal for a minute um, but tapped it over with his left foot that time Nine minutes gone, Kerry six points and scored every one and a half minutes. And Cork, with the exception of one shot and a 45 by Colin Corgi, have yet to threaten. Corgi doesn't want that ball, but Moynihan is certainly using his speed at the moment. 
Well, Kanija, number 14 in his jersey, but he's a Reuben battling full forward at the moment. And now it's Mike, in fact, it's Cooper. Cooper battled up that time by Anthony Lynch. And Cooper loses out. And that's the first time you could really say that Cork have come to terms with the threat of the Kerry full forward line. Yeah, I had thought from earlier on, because of the these players know each other very well, um, that the cornerbacks would have been a bit tighter, defence would have been a bit tighter, but the quality of ball coming in is making that very difficult. Brendan Gerald Sullivan into Colin Corkery. Corkery faced by Moynan, both slip. Corkery back in the play again. Tries to float that ball out. Does to O'Sullivan. Now it's Martin Cronin and back to Cork again who steadies and kicks it despite the outstretched arms of the Kerry defenders 10 minutes and 25 seconds it's Colin Corkery who gets that ball over the bar and that means that Corkery in his total championship of the day has scored 5 goals and 155 points 170 points but I'm sure he'll be looking at this one with equal delight that was the first time in that in the 10 or 12 or the 11 minutes that have gone so far to me that Cork had time on the ball inside the Kerry 45. They seemed to have a man over and it always looked like they were going to get him free to get the ball over the bar. But that's the first time. Broken again. Mike Frank Russell. And open Egypt. Angle ball in again towards Cripper. This time Anthony Lynch is there. Much better from a court perspective. Back to come. Now it's collected by Kieran O'Sullivan who loses out. O'Shea. A loved ball through the middle. Cooper and Lynch. Lynch gets there. Anthony Lynch playing in his 16th game and shrugging off the effects of a hamstring injury to play here today. Donald Daly thought about it and then has left it to Mike Frank Russell. Long Rangers player from Kilorgan comes out to the 20 metre line to give himself a little angle. And puts it wide. Very difficult attempt there, Peter. It was, and it was strange that he went for it. Um, although it was such a confidence to these players that they, they, they take on any challenge. Um, but a, maybe a shorter ball, somebody moving, and created a better angle for himself, maybe a better idea. Maguire, out in the middle of the field again. Michael Scorby can't get it. That doesn't stop Owen Brosnan. Now, Brosnan's the man who loves to run straight through the centre. But he showed against Kildare. This time, his way forward is blocked. Graham Canty right towards Brendan Jero Sullivan nice little bit of play back to Sean Levis Levis tries to go down to the narrow side and succeeds in doing so that's a better ball into Philip Clifford Clifford is route to goal partially cut off that time by Liam Hassett but still is Clifford but loses out and now it's Seamus Moynihan and not for the first time does Moynihan pick up the pieces Mike Frank Russell. This time it's Owen Sexton. Bit of appetite from Cork at the moment. Stung. And that looked like a jersey being held. Van White not put off by the plays from Colin Corkery. He seemed to be indicating that he felt Corkery was holding mine in his jersey as much as mine was pulling him. Joe Cavanagh and the Clifford. Gavin again, it's the old hands that are trying to bring Cork back into this game. Gavin keeps his feet, keeps possession. Benon Murray had more time than he thought. Now, whether that was a snatch kick or the breeze is greater than I think, but I think it's the first one. Okay, with Mark O'Shea, Roman Gilcock. Play the way, slowly out of defence. There's a man who looks so cool in the ball, Seamus Moynihan captain when they won the All-Ireland two years ago to Donald Daly 
Kelly moving forward with ease. Mike Frank Russell. That's Russell's third point. And he really makes everything look so easy. And actually, that pass wasn't meant for him, Jimmy. Sean O'Sullivan was in a better position outside him, and Mike Frank Russell jumped up and took it. Didn't allow it to run through to Sean O'Sullivan. Said they had, there's the ball. And outside him was Sean O'Sullivan. They had two men coming in on that. Frank Russell, no problem to him. Uh, the cork have rearranged a wee bit at the back to try to curb the threat here, and they're making another change. Sean Leavis is back in on him. But 10 minutes gone then in this first half. Cork really up against it at the moment, this K team moving with poise and control. But there'll be a lot of questions asked about Cork Pride, and that's one thing that really have to draw upon. Remember, they're the monster champions. But there's the difference. Kavanaugh was fouled, but the ball that went into Kavanaugh was so, so different from the ball that is being dropped in front of the carry forward now. I suppose that the wind could have something to do with that. Um, the wind is certainly favouring Kerry at the minute, and it means that the, the ball can be kicked that little bit better, that little bit further. But obviously you have to go for it. Yeah, the quality of ball, and just like the way Seamus Moynan rode that tackle. Pass perhaps wasn't the best. Mark O'Shea was the intended recipient. Canon Murray from St Finbar's, the home of Jimmy Barry Murphy, gives it into Cronin. And Cronin can't get anywhere near that. And the Cork pass, that's the second example inside a minute of the type of pass that Cork are given. Yes, well, the others, another factor in that, Jimmy, is, is how tightly marked uh, the Cork forwards are. I mean, they're, they're not getting away so that the ball could be floated into a big space from the, the carry defenders are there. There's a lot of pace in that carry defence as well, like Moynihan, um, Michael McCarthy, and Michael Shea, those boys are all flying machines. Finan Murray seems to be playing a bit further out um, his last while. I don't know whether that's to create space inside uh, or whether he's just chasing the, chasing the ball. Owen Brosnan holds it up despite the challenge of Brendan Gerald Sullivan drives a high, long ball and towards the carry goal. Much better. Excellent work and then given away again by Lynch. Now Shea has it. He's been partially stopped by Martin Cronin. And he gives it to that man again, Cooper. So Cork, I think they've blocked the dam when they get someone to pick up Mike Frank Russell. Then it goes to the far side. And this young man, who was a miler last year, he came on to the Kerry team in the Division 2 final against Leash. Three minutes in, they gave me the ball in the back of the net. And he's just continued from there. Oh, well, I'm afraid Kerry can thank Graham County for that. Such, a, such an elementary mistake from a a senior county player standing waiting on the ball alone the carry man must have ran a good five yards to make up the ground and then set up the score um, just not good enough no and there's a few amateur psychologists at home can look at the body language of Kevin O'Dwyer I think he's beginning to despair the way these points are raining over the bar so it's up to see what Cork can do there's a midfielder Nicholas Murphy from Carragher Line who fed it into Cronin Cronin felt he was fouled very narrow angle but the umpire immediately had his hands out and Colin Corkery in pleading his case with Brian White yeah so that's a case that, but like Brian White let that go it, it was obviously a push it didn't uh, Conan wasn't too badly hurt by it or affected by it but it put him off and up there's it there down he goes enough to put him to the ground from there on he's on the back foot he has to get up uh, the defender has him stopped like that's what the defender wants to do most of all with a forward is he wants to get him slowed down or stopped and then when he went to shoot, he was under much more pressure than he was originally. And Colin Clark was making the point to Brian White that that should have been a free. Um, now that's the way Brian White referees. He referees to allow the game to flow. Um, he'll favour the stronger player in the physical challenge. It'll be the stronger player who come out on top all the time. Um, I, I quite like him as a referee and I rate him very highly uh, because he's very, very consistent. But his referee and does favour the stronger team. I don't think he's getting a Christmas card from Colin Clark this year. Now, when Brosnan was injured, Paddy O'Shea immediately sent Aidan McGurridge to get warmed up, but that danger has been averted. McGurridge is back into the dugout. The ball's in the middle of the field. O'Shea has it, plays it off to his midfield partner, and it makes its way to John Sheehan. Sheehan, that long, languid, lazy kick again. Now, this is dangerous for Kerry, and I think that could be it nearly all over, and that'd be a dangerous thing to say. The killer from Kilorglin strikes again. Indecision in the Kerry defence. The ball broke. 
they transfer their attention to Cooper and then who up pops again but this man Russell and it was a great finish from there but the two the two Cork men got themselves involved it was Sean Levis who in fairness to me normally plays wing half back he's a better wing half back than he is a corner back and he got sucked in and I mean with Frank Russell and Cooper about uh, that was all they needed although I must say Frank Russell put away very well but that's an ominous looking scoreline too isn't it it's absolutely frightening 1-8 Cherry 1 point Cork and this man Corky hasn't got started yet Armagh fans will remember that it was Russell who helped it down their chances when he struck albeit at the Hill 16 end and this time is the canal end as Colin Corky faces a 45 and that's much better the clenched fist of Corkery and the Cork captain strikes with his first point from a place ball it's the second overall and they trail Kerry by 9 points there's the goal again it was Sean Levis who was the man who should have been minding the house in behind uh, but he got, he got sucked in I suppose he going for the ball like Frank Russell went in and then ducked back out Declan O'Keefe Agarda in Cork City keeps the pressure on Cork for enough effort Kevin O'Dwyer Dara Okanaja prowls across the 30 metre line midfield excellent take by Nicholas Murphy Court need a lot of scores and they need them quickly as Martin Cronin crossing the 45 metre line Pace by Hassett. But that pass to Corkery is cut out again. Almost telepathically, Seamus Moynan is picking up anything that goes into the Kerry defence. Tomas O'Shea still got the pass in, picked up a bit of a shoulder injury. As Liam Hassett from Lawn Rangers, like Frank Russell's club, is faced by Graham Canty, but still is the confidence to hold this ball up looking for someone to move inside he has got someone moving that was Doro Kaneja who turns and lazily on the left foot for enough effort the running was absolutely perfect but it, was, it took him a long time to move and yet Hassett could still hold on to the ball still hold on to the ball look up nobody there hold on to it look up nobody there until finally there was a man there Kevin O'Dwyer Colin Corgan gets himself involved in a little bit of shenanigans and Philip Clifford as well Hassett this time that wasn't a shot that was just a, a pass into the middle and you get the feeling that Cork or Kerry are finding it almost too easy at the moment well, funny, this happened to him against Galway as well he played some unbelievable football and then the next bit that's the second ball that um, Liam Hassett has played in that has gone to nothing he kicked one over the end down a while ago um, I suppose it's difficult to sustain that really top quality minute after minute and Brendan Gerald Sullivan is not helping his cause by giving that pass away as O'Shea floats it into Cooper again Cooper faced by Anthony Lynch holds it up with all the confidence of a veteran and tries to get it into Panagia Panagia is beaten by Kierno Sullivan the Urhan player gives it back to Levis and now it's Cork's trying to build up again much played in a, a very slow language style really lacking an atmosphere at the moment and that's probably one of the reasons why a lot of misplaced passes usually find their way into the chest of Seamus Moynan and it's Kerry's trying to put the pressure on again Okanaja into Cooper and Cooper's faced by Lynch a one on one and that left foot of Lynch is off the post so a little bit of respite for Cork as Owen Sexton Gives it away as far as Ronan McCarthy, the Douglas player, is held up. And he's showing a lot of commitment. Yes, and frustration as well, Jimmy. That was sheer frustration there. Um, Owen Brosnan was sort of stopping him, taking the quick free, but the build-up of frustration over the last 20-25 minutes has manifested itself there. 
But mate, Rooney McCarthy pushed him off. So the substitute, Alan Cronin, who came in for Morris McCarthy before the game, has now been taken off. So the the court team that we see down below at the moment is the one that was announced at training on Tuesday night as McCarthy gets it into Corkery. This time he's fouled. Wins the free, much to his delight. Stays a few yards and recompense. Seamus Moynihan pleads his case, but not too strongly. Wins his case, actually. And you feel that Colin Corkery's almost been distracted here. Now, Corkery did stay four or five yards. He was caught at it. Moynihan pointed it out to him. And, you know, he should be really worrying about the, the thing of great was the ball on the ground and the two posts that he's supposed to drive the ball over. Yes. And I think maybe he has he has gained another meter, uh, but I think if he let go ahead this time, I suppose anybody else except Colin Corkey would certainly be put up by that. He's telling the nice man that he's going to ignore any any more protests. Well, this is something that happened uh, quite a while ago. In fact, that's Fanon Murray in there and Mark O'Shea. A little yellow card just to let them know who's in charge of this. And all that is over. Colin Corkery adjusts his sights. His target is 46 metres away. He drops it over the bar. And there it is again. What McCarthy did in defence, the Cork captain is doing, trying to rouse his troops. And it's wonderful that they can have a player who just strokes a 45 metre kick over the bar as it is from the 30 metre line. And yes, it's Kerry won the 8th, Corkery 3 points. Yes, that's what the yellow card was all about. Mark O'Shea, who, like four of the K players, had his debut this year in the league game against Armagh and Killarney. K won that game 210 to 29, and four new stars were born. What a kick by O'Keefe, broken down by O'Shea, eventually got it in by Donald Daly, safely held by Darrow Kanija, holder of two All-Ireland medals, the ball passed through the hands of Owen Brosnan and Mike Frank Russell from the 45 metre line, watches and sees that ball drifting to the right. Carry with another wide, that's their fourth of this first half. A lot of passion being expressed in the court face at the moment, all around the thing. Yes, but I think a lot of it is frustration. Um, interesting to think that all six carry forwards are playing very well, Jimmy. You know, Derek and AJ on um, Kieran O'Sullivan, all around the place, they're playing very well. Ron McCarthy. Well, I haven't really seen the speed of this man, Brendan Gerald Sullivan, but he really can move. And Quarkery is going to talk himself into a yellow card at the moment. And White says, give me the ball. I think that was always going to happen. Yes, well, I, I didn't see what Seamus Moynihan did to him. I don't know whether Corkery's at it or not, but uh, he's getting very annoyed in there. He is a man who's really annoyed both him and the court supporters. Mike Frank Russell, a goal in three points. Kerry moving again, but it must be constantly stressed that Kerry are playing with the win. Although sometimes the way Kerry play football, I don't think the wind really comes into the equation at all. Cooper still manages to get it out. And Kerry playing close inside. Cooper, what a way to finish the ball. This is off the training ground. The dream man played the ball in. Russell combined with Cooper and O'Shea. It's no wonder the Kerry supporters on their feet. This is vintage Kerry football. And just look at that. 19 years of age and turn the court defence to shreds. I don't know, it's hard, hard to find words. There was absolutely no point for Donald Daly to pass that ball. He should have tapped it over the bar, but such is the confidence with Pierce. Although I felt the heads are going down. Kieran Sullivan didn't get back in there once the ball went by him. Um, and you know, if, if you drop off a very high level of work rate against players of this quality, uh, you're going to get absolutely skinned. Keep it going, says Potty. Here it is again. Russell gave the ball out to Donald Daly. Now he could have fisted over the bar. A little nonsense flick inside. And what about that for a finish? In his debut game against Leach, two minutes into the game, he struck the ball to the back of the net, and the K-man said someone felt one of the ball boys had run out onto the park at the time. 
but here comes Kerry again Russell not him this time that's the other tormentor in chief Sean Levis and there's certainly be a noble love for Kerry to talk about at half time as Eamon Fitzmaurice gets in there yes the foul was certainly from behind and Cork are losing the plot at the moment but Noel Murray's getting himself involved and it's all down to sheer frustration yes and the passes are not quite right and you know Kerry are now in the driving seat and they can, they can afford um, to slow it down they can afford to allow those wee niggles to frustrate the Cork people Cork players so five minutes of torture for Cork still to be undergone before they can retreat to the safety of the changing rooms Owen Sexton I don't think with um, Larry Tompkins in the changing rooms it's going to be that safe Jimmy I think you're right Graham Canty fires it in again hopefully and there's hardly a second of the field that Kerry are not in complete control Sean O'Sullivan first player from the from Maine club to represent his county at senior level the entire village is here today to support him as they did in the minor game with young Donahoe Walsh who is midfield Graham Canty and still they can do absolutely nothing O'Shea just flicked off that challenge as if it was a fly Cooper with the left foot this is just unbelievable absolutely unbelievable now remember back the last year when Kerry were absolutely taken apart by me they were beaten by two 14 to 5 points and they have come back here today Peter to redress the balance yes but at the same time Jimmy as that, as that Cork attack was building and the ball went to uh, Philip Tiffert was knocked away from him when it came back down the field uh, Colin Cooper was 50 yards away from Sean Levis why Sean Levis hadn't made up the ground while the ball was up the field I don't know I mean Jesus even Cooper a yard is plenty never mind 40 or 50 I think the, the, the Cork defence are just well it's not frustration in their case they're beginning to see no way back and yet it is a, a defence that's got a lot of experience with the exception of Levis there are five backs from the 99 final against me but they just can't get the ball they can't use it they've been put under all sorts of pressure and now Morris McCarthy come back in again gets the first really good pass in and Colin Corgi gets it floats it invitingly into the path of Fanon Murray Murray immediately faced by Mark O'Shea turns inside gets onto the left and now Cork need a major score they'll have to make do with a minor one however it's Cork's fourth point 32 and a half minutes almost gone and the St Finbar's player gets his first point it's 11th of this year's championship and Cork certainly needed it good defensive work for here Mark O'Shea now he slipped there but he had, he had held him up before that uh, but those you were suggesting he should go for a goal Jimmy but there were a lot of Kerry players getting back to cover and these are Kerry players who can when they get back there they can tackle and block so you need to get the ball away quickly Larry Tompkins surveys the pitch where he won two All-Ireland medals with the Cork side in the 89 and 90 Tompkins who started his career off with Kildare I'm sure uh, already is composing his speech at half time I hope the doors are well closed as Joe Cavanagh gets away from Fitzmaurice but Fitzmaurice doesn't mind him going out to the wing because he feels that he'd not be able to drop it over the bar Philip Tiffert couldn't get it Declan on the Keith picks it up and just look at the superior attitude of Moynan as he picks this ball out gives it off to Tomas O'Shea and that was a hopeful kick one of the rare times in this first half that the pass from Kerry hasn't reached his intended target Anthony Lynch being tackled by Kaneja McCarthy showing no signs of an injury now here's an opportunity for Cork inside Clifford buries it is the only way to describe that Clifford collected the pass from Fanon Murray and if any team ever needed to score and if supporters ever needed to give vent to their feelings it was that it took 33 almost 34 minutes but Clifford enjoyed that one first mistake this long time by uh, Seamus Moynihan by that I mean in any game so far this year perhaps Philip Clifford did very well to score this two defenders although they came both came to the one side but Clifford has been having a torrid time on Michael McCarthy he'll be delighted on the walk in that he has at least got that feather in his cap um, I think we're all relieved that Cork got that goal 
Well, maybe that'll ease Laurie's half-time speech. We've been told there's one minute of injury time as O'Shea plucks it from the clouds. Sean O'Sullivan is blocked. Gets it back again. Fouled by Canty. Mike Frank Russell will take this free. Thinks about it off the ground. Just look at the way Russell looks all around the pitch. Sees if someone is moving. And when he sees them, just tries to pop the ball to them. That time, O'Connell was the target. Keanu Sullivan was all over him. And the ball just harmlessly over for a way. But Kevin O'Dwyer is in a hurry. There'll be a booking here, probably. It'll go against Nicholas Murphy of Kyga Line. But that's foul and Liam Hassett as Paddy O'Shea, proud holder of eight All Ireland medals, and still showing as much energy as the manager of the Kerry side as he did when he was a player. O'Shea drops it in again. It's the quick flick from Cooper into the path of Sean O'Sullivan that Cork couldn't cope with. The ball in from O'Shea into uh, Cooper and it's the immediate transfer beautiful score by O'Sullivan Kerry's reply 2-10 the lead to Cork's one goal and four and now McCarthy the centre half comes through the middle and he had all the time in the world but didn't take the opportunity yeah the difference between that score uh, that attempt at a score and that previous Cork score by Sean O'Sullivan uh, good movement up front ball played into the space it perfectly the lay off perfect and the shot perfect um, I thought Ronan McCarthy, McCarthy there after having made the ground running under the pass Manly Lynch he possibly should have handed to one of the forwards to kick it over the bar for him both teams then tripping off at half time the cheers are from the Kerry supporters as they see their side going off having played 35 minutes of absolutely miraculous football and it must be said that that young man in picture Colin Cooper has really set Cook Park alight. Half-time score at Cook Park then is Kerry. Two goals and ten points. Cork, one goal and four points. We knew it would be a sort of scoreline around that, didn't we, Charlie? <laughs> we knew it would be close. We knew Cork would be coming back to win it in the second half by a point. Well, I suppose they have to win in the second half, Jerome. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. like, Kerry are just totally on top, you know, and it's very interesting to see how Minehan's playing Cork Reef. It's Morris is playing very deep, and Minehan's actually playing him from the front and attacking with the ball, you know, forcing Corkery into options maybe of having to mark him because Corkery would be the fittest he's bringing them out the field as well as that he's been very well served by Mark O'Shea and Mike McCarthy who are covering right in behind him just in case but it was just for the Cork goal you know that just that one mistake by Minahan played out the ball to pass and by and they get in for the goal but Kerry totally on top and Cork with a big man in the climb in the second half but for that goal there at the end by Clifford the game was all over okay. tell us what's happened out there explain it to me how Kerry have been so much on top yeah, but this is the second game in a row, the Galway game as well, they totally took control of the match. Now, they didn't have a good second half on that, and probably probably will remind them that in the dressing room, but when you consider 2-10, all the scores from play, and it's a delight to watch, it's what football's about, watching that Kerry team there. Have they and been good or have Cork been bad? Kerry have been good, they're, they're a good side, the forwards are good, they're, you know, they're all comfortable on the ball, they're all able to see them catching the ball, they have in one hand, and they're solo, and they're able to change two feet and everything else, and they're running off the ball is great, and they're getting time out the field to give in quality ball, but it's a delight to watch, I mean, they're, they're five of the forwards are scored from play, and the full forward team has got two seven from play, so what more do you want? Well, everyone's and saying that they're <coughs> straight ahead, they're going to win the All-Ireland, and well, that performance... you go back to Meath against them last, against in the All-Ireland semi-final last year, everybody thought Meath is going to win the All-Ireland, it doesn't matter, sometimes it's, it's, it's better to scrape through in an All-Ireland semi-final, but Kerry have been a delight to watch the first Absolutely. half. Absolutely, okay, and we had a, a message come in, what a great exhibition of slick football from Kerry, from Mark, this is they can only encourage today's youngsters to play the game. I would certainly agree with that. And uh, let's look at a few of the inserts of uh, a few examples of their excellent play in the first half. Mm -hmm. This is an early point making it 4 0 from Russell. Yeah, the ball comes in. Uh, great work here by Daryl Canadian. Gives it off Mike Van Hussey. I think that was his fourth point, or the Kerry's fourth point. Yeah. Uh, playing with great assuredness. You know, a ball like that couldn't can be fit with the ball. But Daryl Canadian does good work. Kerry philosophy always is give the ball in a better position, don't be greedy. And that's what they've been doing again today. This Here is Russell is. again, now it's his third point from play for 7-0, great score. 
Yeah, it's a fabulous score again, I left one. I think what's happening in the Cork defence, they're tying up with Anthony Lynch on Russell and on Cooper and they're taking him over and back as they can. So it's great to be able to do that turn on. And Cork are giving them too much room there. But again, they're, when you have a player that's two-footed, the back has to be very, very tight on them. They stop the ball coming in first and get very, very tight. And the Cork backs are not tightening up and they're depending totally. In fairness, Anthony Lynch is actually holding the full back lane or probably the whole back lane together on his own at the minute as good as he can. They're talking big names as well in Cork who have delivered up in there. Brendan Gerald Sullivan, Joe Cavan, Ronan McCarthy. These boys, we haven't seen them yet today. Graham County's doing his best around the middle of the field, trying to play a defender's role. Nicholas Murphy, I think, has only caught one ball, has been very quiet as well. Big players like that, who Corkery is depending on to give good quality ball in, aren't really performing today. As well as that, Corkery, you can see him, he's starting to engage with the referee, he's starting to row, he's getting agitated, and that's not going to help his game too, because he's going to start going for the ball in positions you know, that, that he normally wouldn't. He's going to start lacking confidence himself. And, and uh, when Cork thought it couldn't get any worse, it got worse. Kerry got a goal. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they've got two goals. This is the first goal. High ball in again. Um, comes down. You know, Levis and Lynch have to take, uh, you know, the blame for that. Both of them are up. Anthony Lynch and Son, Son Levis. You might see it from behind here. The boat go up and it actually goes over their heads. You know, Mike Frank Russell just doesn't miss from there. Yeah, but Levis, Levis actually shouldn't have gone for that ball. He, no. he was the man in the eyes out the field, looking out the field, and he shouldn't see that there. I mean, he, mm. he called out. Um, but they're great at finishing goals like that there on the ground. And, and, you know, both of them are doing a lot of this stuff with their left foot, actually, when you, when you see it there. But you have to give a lot of credit to the Kerry players out the field. Yeah. And we're talking about leadership Watch here. Watch here. He, he gets taken out of it, and he's out of the picture completely, but comes back in with the instinct of a forward. And, you know, two players to beat there, top left-hand corner. You know, superbly taken. Now, if you look at when I, look at it again, there he goes, taken. He's completely out of the game, but he, he stops, sees the chance, appears two men there again. You know, Anthony Lynch straight on top of him, but uh, he managed to place a top top left hand corner. An amazing performance. Amazing. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, they're not big forwards. We, we talk about about we, we need big forwards. Pace is what Gaelic football is about now, especially in that big pitch in Crow Park. is about pace, speed, and Kerry have got it. And we, we chat about leaders on the field. First ball and Seamus Moynihan in front. One's that gets it out. Another kick out comes out from Kerry. Darrow Shea in the middle of the field catches, turn around and kicks a great point to his left foot. That's what you need, and that's what Kerry have. And I mean, we know about Kerry. They produce lovely footballers. They're always. I mean, it is the home of Gaelic football, and it's, it is actually great to watch it. They have scored all their scores from from play and everything else. Just be interested to see what they do the second half. Put it into some sort of context for me. There's a message there. Kerry Gold, watch out Armagh, you haven't a hope. Looking at that, do you Armagh have a hope? I mean, every game is different. You know, of course, we talk about Mead last year, Hammond Kerry, and then Galway beating them easily. Kerry are just totally unsung today. And two incidents, you know, sum it up in the game. Ball comes in, Owen Brosnan, it actually goes through his hands, and it's still picked up by another Kerry man, you know, in, in, in Mike Frank Cross, who actually puts it wide. Liam Hassett, I think, had a luxury at one stage of running about 40 yards with the ball, stopping twice to look up and then maybe changing his option and going on again before he gave it to Darrell Kinedja. You know, th th this is the sort of practice training ground football that they're playing at the moment. Now, I don't mean Cork are playing with a good win and in and the did, second half. I don't think they're totally out of it yet. At the end of the half, they yeah, got yeah. a goal. You know. a, good, a good goal taken well by Philip Clifford, you know, and the, the high ball comes in and, and he latches onto the end. We're already saying too little, too late for him now. Well, I mean, that's Seamus Mine, an uncharacteristic error by him. Uh, great work there by uh, Fanon Murray actually gives it out to his right when he might have gone on himself. But uh, Philip Clifford, you know, there's days he'd be a best player and there's other days when he, he won't show up at all. And it was, it was appearing like that at one stage. Uh, that game, should, that goal should help his confidence. But Kerry came back and notched on another couple of points at the end of it. Then, you know, there's, I think that's, that's mine and makes that mistake. Totally uncharacteristic. So was that far ahead? 11 yeah. points ahead? Well, it's never over, you know, until, uh, until the end. And as I say, Cork have the, have, the, have the win in the second half. But there's just too many of these carry forwards on song today. And, you know, you watch Colin Cooper and Mike Frank Russell gets it. And Darryl Kinnear just play his work rate is very, very high as well. All of the carry forwards are playing that. And, of course, Darryl O'Shea is excellent in the middle of the field. OK, thanks for the moment. Now the minor semi-final from today in Croke Park. Kerry in this as well. And they came into it highly rated after beating champions Tyrone in the quarterfinals. But they were given quite a run around by Meath. Final score, Meath 213, Kerry 111. Austin O'Callaghan reports. <laughs> When Mead last won an All-Ireland minor title ten years ago, they broke Armagh hearts with a late goal. Today, the net was found almost immediately. Kerry's keeper and captain, Brian Sheehan, had trouble keeping his eye on Brian Farrell's high lob, David Murtha on hand to supply the rebound. The Royals ticked on four points, but then a foul on Cahill McGerald presented the Kingdom with a golden opportunity to get back into the match. Declan O'Sullivan making no mistake, with the penalty kick. 
But the Mead attack looked the more fluent. Kerry's defence, the less assured. And Joe Sheridan took full advantage here. Meath took a six-point lead into the second half. Kerry weren't playing well and yet still weren't out of it. Full forward Dan Duna finding the range here. Colin O'Connor is a former Republic of Ireland under-15 soccer international. His pace carried him through here to a point. It could easily have been three. But on the day, Meath had the ability and the answers. Substitute Mark Querty keeping enough daylight between the sides. As did Francis Murphy to ensure it's the Royal County who'll be awaiting the winners of the Derry Longford semi final this day week. Thanks, Austin. Now we have a club championship bonus for you with the semi final in down last night between Rostrever and Leitrim. It was played at Newcastle and it ended in a draw, 111 each. Leitrim Fontenoy's in white are trying to roll back the years. Their club is the oldest in down, but they haven't been champions since 1920. That may change the way this team can play. A fine goal in the first half by Patrick Pierce McCrickert. But it was level at the break. In the second half, Leitrim had more goal chances but didn't take them. Aidan O'Prey's shot blocked by the substitute goalkeeper. And Leitrim were left to rue that miss three minutes later when Rostrever found the net at the other end. Watch this for a master class in the art of selling dummies by sub Martin Sherry. A super goal. And minutes later, they were six points ahead. It looked all over, especially with Leitrim still going for goals and still missing them. It was time to take your points, and they did from there on in. Liam Doyle kicked a few frees and some great approach work involving halfback Dan Morgan set up Opre for another point to close the gap, though it could have been a goal. The equaliser finally came in the dying seconds with a bit of controversy. Was it over the posts? Hard to tell from this, but Opre and Leitrim were just happy to get a replay. When you're looking at it with five points down, we did get out of jail a bit, but we worked hard, you know, we did, had a dig deep. And getting to the semi-final of the championship is a big occasion for a club like us, um, to play a big club like Strava. Um, but, you know, championship football, um, you're up for it, you know, and it's all in the day, so hopefully we're glad at the same time to get an all bite at it. Also yesterday, staying in the same county, there was a superb turnout at the Newry Mitchells under 10. This is the biggest under 10 competition in Ireland with great football all day and teams from counties as far apart as West Meath, Derry, Cavan and Dublin. In fact, with the Armad Dublin game next Sunday, I got the view of a few of the experts, starting with Vinny, and he's from the St. Patrick's Club. against Dublin. Right now, though, back to the side and in Crow Park. Mark is with... in the country knows that he struck and the rules are that he should have been suspended for a month and you know uh, if you were an ordinary you'd maybe feel part of it. Derry County boards and you have to ask questions why now has there not something been done about it? A little bit more muscle you feel required then from Crow Park? Well if you set a precedent in something uh, on an issue and you don't follow it up here you'd have to wonder is there a different rule? Let's get back to here. I'll not embarrass you by saying live on television that you're 50 quid in Cork to win. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, What's going wrong? I don't know. They're just they're totally been dominated. The pace carrier obviously very much up for this game. 
Uh, you can see it even from Paddy O'Shea's attitude along the line that uh, you know he he just is he's up and down like a caged animal, and their players are the exact same. Uh, from corner back out, they're totally dominant. They're meant physically, they're not giving them an inch. Uh, um, Kerry fullback Marty Moyna, he's uh, totally dominant. And Colin Cargery, and uh, it's just a style of shade. He's, he's running the middle pitch, he's given quality ball through to the forwards, and the work rate of their forward lines is just unbelievable. Okay, Jerome Corker out, Kerry it to come out over and out to you. And he's out 50 quid. They didn't get that from us, that's more than we'd give him, but twice the amount we'd give him for turned out for us today anyway. Enda Gormley losing money. We've been running a vote today for Sam. Who you think will win the All-Ireland? The latest voting, would you believe? Well, it doesn't say it there, but Armagh 37 votes. I think we have a lot of viewers on Armagh. Kerry just 17, Dublin 17, and here's the surprise. Tyrone have got one. It wasn't me phoned in. I'm not allowed to phone in the set here, but obviously someone's been away for the entire summer. You can keep the votes coming there by text message only. The number there, 07986114251. It's on the top of your screen on the top right-hand corner. Cork already out in the pitch. Kerry not out yet. You'd have thought it would have been the other way around. I mean, it's strange to see that they're out. Maybe just want to get out as soon as possible to get away from Larry in the dressing rooms. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just been interested to see if they made any changes. You know, I know that Anthony Lynch was carrying a bit of an injury going on. He's, he's off the pace with Mike Frank Russell. You know, he's really running the show. Russell and Cooper are crisscrossing in the full forward line and doing serious damage. There's another one option that, uh, that um, Larry Tompkins might have is to bring on Bernie Collins. He's an Aussie. He's been in, in Australia for his past two years. He's up for it. And I see him on the list, but you, you might. They have got it. They haven't shown anything in the first half of, an, of a Cork team playing in all Ireland semi final. Very, very disappointing. The first 10 minutes is going to be very, very important. If, if Cork can get a few scores on the board early on and make a game of it, if Kerry gets in a couple of scores, they'll just go on and just hold the game up and hold the ball up and won easily. But the first 10 minutes are going to be important. Kerry didn't perform well in the second half the last day, but I feel that the Cork defence is going to have to tighten up, get tight, man to man, and start getting tight. Now, I don't agree with Jared. I think and I, actually Anthony Lynch is the man that's actually, I think, holding them together. He's trying to, they're trying to move them from one player to the other. Trying to the other backs have got to start to give them a bit of support. OK, second half now from Crow Park in Dublin. Cork against Kerry for a place in the All-Ireland final. Kerry looks as if they're already there. We will, find, we will find out now with Peter and Jimmy. 2-10 to 1-4. Ronan McCarthy and Joe Kavanagh have gone off. They've been replaced by number 25, Colin Crowley, and number 21, Jim O'Donoghue. So whatever else Larry Tompkins has said at half-time, he has certainly rung the changes. Crowley is a sub he's been used in every game as Brian White gets the second half underway. And now a lot of questions will be answered here. Have Cork the bottle to come back at this K side and can K maintain the tremendous standard and quality of play that the K they, or they did in the first half. They scored 210 and their full forward line was absolutely electric. So it's going to be a big, big test for Cork. The pride of Munster, this year's Munster champions against Kerry, who, as I said earlier on, were thrashed here last year by me. But there's a young man who has certainly set the crowd buzzing every time he gets a ball. Colin Cooper from Dr. Crooks and Killarney transfers it inside to Mike Frank Russell. Russell hurried by Sean Levis, lost out. Ball collected by Martin Cronin. It'll just be interesting to see, Jimmy, if the wind was such a significant factor in the first half and the gap they have at the minute all they want to do is to try and just keep the scoreboard ticking over Colin Corkery his luck was out the linesman was getting ready to signal it but it just brushed the side of the post and Cork's first wide but it shows you one thing about Colin Corkery this is there's absolutely nothing to him. He's prepared to have a go from anywhere. Yes, it also shows that there is a breeze uh, Aidan Cork at the minute because in the first half, uh, they weren't shooting from that sort of range. They were having to take much more time on the ball. Obviously, now they feel they can score from further out. Technically, the tip. Keep still drives about 70 yards. Mark looking to get very necessary possession. Brenton Joe Sullivan is in there. Brian White decides to have a through ball between Nicholas Murphy and the carry captain Daru Che. Really down by Owen Sexton. 
Ben Deveni in a league campaign a couple of years ago scored 2 1 off Owen Sexton here at Croke Park. So we'll be trying to leave the pitch today with happier memories, but the old malaise of the first half, poor court passing, still happening. That time it's cut out by Tomas O'Shea, Michael McCarthy from Kilcommon is fouled, immediately takes a quick free. Don Daly was fouled as he struck that ball, and that ball landed about 15 metres out. So it'll be a free for Kerry, and there can be no real complaints. Yes, Cork are going to have to be careful now. They're going to have to try to channel that frustration into actually getting the ball and using the ball as well as they can. Brendan Gerald Sullivan, a, a great shoulder uh, to stop him if it's coming out, and then he battered at him and gave away a free and was annoyed when it was given. Then in the middle of the field, a late challenge. And I mean, these are not the sort of chances that Cork need to be given to carry just at the minute. Well, Darrell Canadians at one point in the first half, 19 points in this year's. So Darrell Canadians, along with the three O'Shea brothers, all play for and Grail Tack and West Kerry. No clean catching this time. Easily collected by Tomas O'Shea. Nephew of Toddy. Gives it to his brother Dara. Dara's jersey is held. Pass, intended pass is picked out by Anthony Lynch. The Nave Abon player who recovered from a hamstring injury to play here today. Gives it into O'Sullivan. Now will we see O'Sullivan's speed? Well we're starting to get the ball as far as the 45 metre line, and that is certainly a wasted kick. Yeah, again, it's about getting the ball, making the right decisions with it, and then executing it very well. I mean, Anthony Lynch held up the ball and got it out to Brendan Gerrard Sullivan in space very well. There he, took, he went on, he went by Tomas O'Shea, who has moved over to this side to, to pick him up, and then a poor decision. He didn't run into If he was going to shoot himself, he should have ran into the 20 metres of space that was in front of him before having the attempt. So, Cork's half-forwards have yet to score. That was well spotted by Brian White. One midfield came across, knocked the player out of the road, leaving it for Darrow Shea to collect it. And Cork to Corkery. Corkery turn. Now the breaking ball will be waited for eagerly by Cork, but it doesn't happen. Mark O'Shea held it all the way, and there's the frustration of the first half bubbling over in the second, and the brothers come in. Mark O'Shea first of all was tackled by Clifford and then Mark O'Shea came in but meanwhile the man who kept his eye on the ball and on the game was Seamus Moynihan transferred inside to Liam Hassett there's that delicate little floated pass in again, easy collected by Okanagia, pinpoint accuracy Cooper drops recovers, strikes this, this is absolutely unbelievable but actually, Jimmy, Cooper done his hardest work there before he got the ball. Uh, I mean, the precision pass through to Dario Kanadji, who is giving Kieran O'Sullivan a bit of a roasting, um, was great. But the pass in, the movement off the ball by Cooper, inside, then out, and then the ball delivered perfectly for him. So, golden four to Cooper. Martin Cronin. Inside. Parkery blown up yet again. And Seamus Moynihan... Is not very happy, and this is one thing we don't want to see. Now, off the ball, a lot of things are happening here. And Bram White stands, waits for things to settle themselves down, and people are getting involved, who should be just walking away now. Tomas O'Shea has been clearly seen to be punching people, but Bram White, he just wants to get on with the play. He and wants the dust to settle, he wants, he's, going to, he's going to boot Corkery. Unless the linesman gives him some more information. Uh, Philip Clifford there got involved as well. He, he has been having a, a, apart from the goal he scored, he's been having a frustrating game so far. And I mean, the court players are just on a knife edge at the minute. Well, the video evidence have required would clearly show that Colin Corkery pulled and held the jersey of one Seamus Moynihan. And everything flowed from that. Colin Corkery might be complaining about the type of ball that's coming in, but the man to complain to is not the referee. He should be talking to his midfield 
and half backs and he can't really complain about the yellow card this will be an interesting conversation more so than the previous one yes obviously the it is the linesman who has who has picked out Tomas O'Shea and it will be interesting to see what how Brian White acts on that information Yellow card as Damon O'Sullivan comes on. The man from Klein, and that's a hot ball, and that was because O'Shea reacted to a free which had initially been given to Kerry. Although, with all the tempers being frayed, sometimes bringing such a crowd of people back in is not the best idea. And I think that was the, the sensible thing to do as Colin Corkery and it's very noticeable that the two people involved again were the two people who were booked a moment ago it's and right. this is one thing that they don't want this game which has been an absolute delight to watch has now developed into what could only be described as a brawl it's this whole thing Peter when you have an incident happens and you have a referee's throw ball you bring so many players back together again and what happened Corky won the free or won the ball and then he was fouled and Brian White's going to throw it up again I, I think Colin Corky is very very lucky uh, to still be on the field he, he did nothing there that was, going, it was life threatening but he certainly was petulant kicked the ball at the Kerry Pier threw a man out of the way um, he could have gone at this stage and away comes O'Shea so hopefully we can get on with the action as John Sheehan floats it into the path of Young Cooper, Anthony Lynch, feeds it back to Graham Canty. Breaking ball again was hoped for by Cork, but there's no chance when Kerry defence is so vigilant, especially Michael McCarthy, the common player, fouled, and now the ball wins its way to the far side of the field to Brendan Jero Sullivan. Mike Frank Russell, collection head of Anthony Lynch. Foul on the man with the ball. And Brian White, whatever he saw, he acted straight away. Yes, he's trying to, to stamp his authority on the game again. That was a, a late challenge. And again, that's the second late challenge. Like the court discipline now has... No matter what was said at half time about trying to get a few scores on the board, trying to work exceptionally hard, all those sort of things that, that might have been said and probably were said in the changing room have been lost now in the frustration and the, the lack of discipline. So, Okanaja has only one thing on his mind and he succeeded in doing that drill the ball between the posts. It's the second point of this half, it's his third of the afternoon and his 21st. And this year's championship as Kerry extend their lead. 2.13 to Kerry. Cork yet to score. Okanaja. Faced by Kieran O'Sullivan. Angled ball inside. And he then gets in front of Cooper for a change. And there's this Petulance again. Graham Canty from Bunty Blues, winner of the Monster GA Personality of the Month for July. And it's no wonder that Colin Corkery is annoyed because some of the balls that are going in there were absolutely terrible. As Moynan collects it again, gives it as Captain Dar O'Shea. O'Shea held up momentarily by Canty, but still has time to transfer it in to. Mike Frank Russell Russell to Cooper Liam Hassett with the left foot this time absolutely no answer to that whatsoever you've got to really feel sorry for the Cork defence because Kerry are absolutely on fire Liam Hassett has his second point and there's only one Kerry Ford who hasn't scored yet and that's Owen Brosnan I was almost nonchalantly kicked over the bar they got two presents from late freeze and they worked quite hard for that but they're, they're getting their 
the quality of ball, the quality of movement inside is Cork defensive, no answer to it. So substitute Crowley gives it in. Crossfield ball for Sullivan. And there's perfectly encapsulated the difference between both sides. The type of pass that Fanon Murray was expected to collect. That ball drilled across, flicked away by Eamon Fitzmorris. And all on his own is Sean O'Sullivan from Crimean. But I mean, that, that typifies the way the game has gone, the, the type of ball is coming in. That was a ball kicked across in hope, hoping that somebody would get a hand to it, hoping that somebody would catch it and maybe get a score. That's not the sort of ball that's going to the carry forward line. And just look at the time that John Sheehan from Lawn Rangers has on the ball. He didn't play in the first eight games this year. He had his first game against Limerick. And now that pass has continued on to Tormentor in chief Cooper. Cooper with Lynch holds it up. Just look at the balance of that young fellow in the ball. It's very hard to realise, just 19 years of age. But the pass of his colleague wasn't that good as the ball eventually finds his way to Cork forward. Brenton Churro Sullivan. He's got a man inside him. That man is Martin Cronin. Cronin continuing his move. Now it's the substitute, Colin Crowley. Crowley, angle was difficult. Too difficult, in fact. And the ball goes to the left of post and wide. Crowley from Castlehaven. He might be complaining that he was fouled to me, but he's not going to get many easier chances than that. He was under a lot of pressure, but that's that's what he's expected to do. Declan O'Keefe from Rathmore as the carry supporters will be watch it again. Yes, well, he was right. He was certainly pushed by Dar O'Shea. Cork have now gone with a, a full forward line that should be able to win ball. Jermot O'Sullivan uh, Colin Corkery and Ben Jero Sullivan. Game plans being talked about. Yellow card. I feel that went to Donald Daly. So there's the hopeful ball inside from Kante. Moynan was there. The Jay defence vigilant as ever. Fanon Murray turns and kicks it. O'Sullivan's in there. O'Keefe takes no chances. And when your luckers in, that fisted ball and hope fell perfectly into the path of Donald Daly. And now Kerry can build up slowly again with Liam Hassett. He's the left half forward, remember, back in his own defence. Gets the ball back from Seamus Moynihan. The space has been left up front for Cooper. Cooper with Anthony Lynch. Cooper gets his hand to it. Lynch wins a sideline ball. And Mickey Niblock, former Derry star, in deep consultation with Laurie Tompkins and the rest of the court selectors. What can they do to overcome this green and gold tide? David O'Sullivan from Cloyne, the club of Cork's most famous hurler, Christy Ring. Vincy, the ball finds its way to Jim O'Donoghue. And after 15 minutes of the second half, we have Cork's first score. And to say they got a muted response from their supporters, Peter, would be putting it lightly. Yes, they, they expected them to come out with all guns blazing in the second half, get the ball, use it well, get scores on the board, scores from further out and so on. Um, but really, these first 15 minutes have been a disaster for Cork. It's increased their frustration. Uh, they've missed a couple of chances and they've gone into kicking in high ball that they hope will get some scores. Certainly more on hope than expectation as they move forward again. Mark O'Shea was in there to avert the danger. Brenton Gerald Sullivan's come off his man. He's got Fanon Murray on the inside. O'Shea's after him, but Murray shoots. Oh, what a goal! What a brilliant goal! Declan O'Keefe had no chance. Right up on the angle it went. It got those supporters out of their seats, but will it be enough? 2 5 Cork, 2 14 K. And what a finish from Murray. Now, brilliantly constructed as well. Kept the ball. This is the first time in the second half they've moved the ball with purpose. Got the man in behind, bravely done. Brent Ger Sullivan looks up. No trying to shoot from too far out to here. Measured ball in and oh, an unstoppable shot. Right in the top right hand corner. Well, all that was going on. Kerry have introduced a substitute. Aidan McGarrides from Angleltuck is on in place of Sean O'Sullivan. So it'll be more of the same as we have 
these silly shenanigans in the middle of the field as Cork buoyed up I'm quite sure by that goal Brendan Gerald Sullivan chased by Mark O'Shea and it's still O'Sullivan now can Cork get again appear to be a foot block as Paul Corgi plays on now White had blown a whistle he'd actually signal what the foul was for and Cork is incensed so perhaps the crowd noise was so much better they didn't hear the whistle but well it was absolutely no doubt that Brian White had stopped the play pointed out to the 14 yard line even indicated what the, what the foul was for it was for a, a, an ankle tap on Brendan Jura Sullivan as he went through um, Cork is not a happy camper he certainly is not and on Murray checks with the referee along has gone as halfway through the second half is sure the message that he has given and meanwhile Kerry make another substitution Tom O'Sullivan from Rathmore will come on he take the place of Mark O'Shea who seemed to lose Brendan Jero Sullivan so Uncle Potty had no great problems taking off the nephew when he saw that he couldn't keep up with O'Sullivan Colin Corky then his first point in the second half is fourth and all the margin is eight points and there it is again Brand White quite correct the ankle tap there's the signal and Corkery picked the ball up and thought he was going to take a, a quick three from there so O'Shea is making his way off eventually Tom O'Sullivan goes on with clear instructions from his manager I'd say he's going to send uh, Tom O'Shea Tom O'Shea back in on Brendan Gerr he'd been doing very well on him in the half back line That's exactly what has happened. So this is much better from Cork and especially from Graham Canty. Angle ball is past Moynihan. Collected by O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan kicks it high. Declan will keep watches it as it floats to the left of post and wide. With three points from Cork, help them back into this game, Peter. Well, there's plenty of time left. I mean, it's, it's difficult for Kerry to maintain the, the level that they've been playing in the first half. If Cork could get back in with a couple of scores, um, at the minute the gap is eight. Um, if it was reduced to a more manageable seven, you know, sorry, six or five, and another goal. But it's still going way off the, the way Cork are playing the frustration. And certainly Petulant will be a word to come to mind as old Sexton. Gives it away, collected by Tomas O'Shea, collected by Moynihan, that little injection of pace. Cuts through the midfield area, fires by Colin Crowley, but still gets a lovely ball over the top. But Martin Tronan from Nemo Rangers is alert, collected by Canty. And this is much better from Cork, more menacing. Now, will the final pass be good enough? Brendan Jero Sullivan has been to O'Shea, and now he's got Tomas, takes his time and kicks it. Left and wide, and really need, but you sort of question why is he shooting from 40 yards? Yes, he had done very, very well to win the ball. It wasn't a good pass at all, and between two carry men, he managed to win the ball and had a shot. That's his second wide in a row. That's Cork's fifth wide in this half, Jimmy. And some of them have been from good possession, or put it this way, possession that could have been turned potentially into a score with a better decision. And the interesting comparison is that Kerry have it no way the second half. Eamon Fitzmaurice collected. Rins it down toward Mike Frank Russell. Nevis is there. Nicholas Murphy. Cork showing more appetite, certainly. Substitute Colin Curley is now brought into play. This is Fitzmaurice. Gets past Fitzmaurice. This is certainly much better from Cork. And now can they get a score as off the ball two men are getting entangled. One of them was Graham Campy, the other one was Owen Brosnan. And here's Corkery, turns, kicks it over the bar. The first half decent ball you could describe that went in. And the play will be held up because the linesman who wants to have a word with Bran White. And the men involved were Campy, who's been booked already as we watch that ball going over the bar and Owen Brosnan so Brian White is certainly a busy man this afternoon 
Yes, but what a take by Colin Corkery. That's when he's at his most dangerous. A floating ball that hangs there allows him the time to cover the distance and get up. And I mean, for a split second as he hit the ground, uh, the, the goal was there. As it was fair play to the Kerry defence for pushing him wide, and the, the damage was limited to a point. Well, I think that we're going to see at least one red charge for a double yellow. In fact, we're not. So the conversation from linesman to referee must have been rather muted. A little word of warning is all that Brown White feels is necessary. As Kai, who've been relatively quiet by comparison to their blistering first half performance, collect the ball in the middle of the field, Dar O'Shea fires it out to the direction of one Mike Francis Russell has it still carry again Russell throws it high Cooper's under so is Lynch ball is broken down bravely down on it is Owen Sexton and Cork win a, a free out with the endeavour to take quickly and do so because Sean Leavis has got the ball Leavis as the substitute appeared to hold for non Murray. Tom O'Sullivan. And this is very, very silly. And totally unnecessary. Cork had won the free. And Murray goes in after seeking his own retribution. Now, Brian White Peter will certainly have to do something here. Yes, he, he has been, or he's been trying to be understanding of the frustration that exists certainly in the court team but I mean Finn and Murray there uh, now Tom O'Sullivan definitely was trying to slow the thing down uh, but it wasn't it wasn't over the top Finn and Murray within hit him to get the ball back um, I mean Brian White he, well he's eventually had to take that sort of action there were fists thrown by both players I mean Finn and, this is a throw up now I mean uh, further damage to court uh, good defending by them got the ball out this far and then that lack of discipline that we've talked about probably created by frustration um, results in a player down, player sent off. Um, well, they could live with that, uh, but they're losing another scoring opportunity here. But now is... Corkery's gone as well. That's the second time he has kicked the ball away. The first time it was at Seamus Mine and inside in the big square. This time it's at Brian White. Brian White has just had it up to here, Jimmy Bell looks things. But, but I was about to say the last pictures were absolutely terrible. You had two players on an All Ireland semi final stage indulging in corner by tactics, getting involved, fighting and the fact was that the scoreline is 2.14 to 2.7 and you have two teams here who have given so much to association over the years and it's resulting in this. Cork have lost two players, Kerry have lost one and now we have this situation again where you have a throw ball and you have so many players in and around the referee and Brian White does the really sensible thing blows up a free and tries to get everybody out of the road. Meanwhile the play goes on and the ball is kicked by Morris McCarthy over the sideline but at this moment in time the game is almost incidental because Cork have lost their captain they've lost Fanon Murray and Kerry have lost his sub and this game has really left a bad taste in the mouth Yes well they lost the plot fairly early on Jimmy when their frustration started to become the most dominant emotion that was being displayed the passion uh, the hard work those things all went out of the game I mean Colin Corky with his petulance was lucky to be on the field that long well, there's no doubt that he really tested Brand White's patience and I think after he'd sent the, the first two players off another one wasn't going to make any difference and he certainly wasn't going to put up with anything more from the court captain. Okay, haven't scored for 13 minutes as we get back to the real substance today. Cooper turns and twists and you can put that statistic to bed. 2.15 to carry. Colin Cooper one goal and five points from a 19 year old from the Dr. Crooks Club in Killarney and that's what we really should be concentrating on today as Eamon Fitzmaurice plucks it out of the sky again and that's the 14 men of Kerry against the 13 men of Cork Cooper tried to keep it in didn't succeed in doing so and it's a noble pity Peter that the game had to degenerate to this it is. It, it should be remembered as a day in which Colin Cooper, well, he arrived against Galway, but he certainly has made a, a major impact at the end. And I mean, Andy Lynch hasn't played that bad. He has worked very hard. He has tackled well. He has tried to get to the ball. 
first as much as off as he can but the quality of ball coming in and Cooper's presence on the ball Boucher floats it over the top to hit on McGarage McGarage transfers it inside as I said in the first half you keep an eye on Colin Cooper who pops up Michael Francis Russell and not only Michael Francis and Cooper inside but I, I've been very impressed with Dario Kinegi today now I don't know whether Kieran O'Sullivan is standing off him a bit trying to cover his two corner backs um, but he has been he has been better than I have seen him for a while well the Kerry full forward line have Colin Cooper 1-5 Michael Frank Russell 1-4 and Kinegi 3 points 2-12 not bad return at all Fitz Morris gives it to Tomas O'Shea and the wide open spaces of Coke Park are certainly increasing in dimensions as far as Cork are concerned as Martin Cronin falls down the garage free for Mike Frank Russell the distance is about 30 metres out as the Cork fans decide that they'll make the way to the railway station in their cars and make what will be a long long journey back to Munster Russell flicked it in towards Mike Hassett dropped across and into the back of the net and I was about to say Owen Brosnan is the only man who hasn't scored well he soon put that right so anything that could go wrong for Cork has gone wrong they've lost two men Sean Levis collided with his keeper Owen Brosnan ensures that six Kerry forwards have scored today and Kerry are leading on a scoreline of 3-16 to Cork's 2-7 well, I was just thinking at the same time, Jimmy, that Owen Brosnan hasn't been, hasn't played that well. We haven't seen any of his spectacular pace. And I mean, a, mi a missed kick from him ends up uh, putting a real seal on this result. Well, Brosnan, who scored 2-2 against Wicklow and a goal and a point against Kildare, we wondered when the goal was going to come. It took 29 minutes of this second half. This bad-tempered second half, it must be reiterated. And Kerry win yet another free, and Cork really have given up the ghost. Mike Frank again, the distance is roughly the same. This time, however, he decides he just pop it over the post, so he now matches the scores of Colin Cooper, 1-5 to the two corner forwards. And Dara O'Kanaja will make way for John Crowley, ensuring that John Crowley has played in every game as we watch Brosnan's goal the little turn Levis can get the hand to it drops it over the head of Kevin O'Dwyer and holds his head in disgust as John Crowley as I say has played in every game and an all-star in 2001 who can't nail down a place on this Pleasant County team Peter yes but that's one of the secrets of their success this year oh, well this last number of years they've got a quality bench the players on the field know that if they step back a little bit from 100% effort that there'll be a player who come in and if they lose their place, he's liable to have difficulty getting it back. Well, Paddy O'Shea is going to have the wonderful luxury of having all these players to pick for for this year's All-Ireland Final meeting between either themselves and Dublin or Armagh, which will be contested here next Sunday in front of a packed house as Declan O'Keefe shows that he is fully alert keeping his hand on that ball the quick free didn't fool him as he gives it out to his captain Darrow Shea Moynihan freed from the shackles of having to worry about the court captain Colin Corkery sees Crowley playing the ball into the man who has replaced three times this year Mike Frank Russell Russell with all the time in the world four minutes remaining of this the first of this year's Bank of Ireland All-Ireland semi-final the Battle of Munster which has been won at the moment quite easily by Kerry remember they were beaten by Cork in the All-Ireland semi-final and they're leading here by 3.17 to Cork's 2.7 Cody O'Shea rings another change sorry Peter he's going to take off Liam Hassett and the man who's going to take his place is Declan Quill Declan Quill as we watch that goal again which really hammered the nail into the Cork coffin Declan Quill was one of four players who made his debut against Armagh and all of them have really shown today that they have won their place fairly and squarely in this Kerry side 
I was just going to make the point to me about Brendan Jura Sullivan who was rampant uh, against Mayo free running free scoring and in this second half alone he has, he has three three wides to his credit broken down by O'Shea collected by his brother Tomas and hurrying through the middle is Owen Brosnan sandwiched whistle is sounded free in now Owen Brosnan maybe he hasn't I don't think he's played that well today and that was another instance of it uh, Johnny Curley had pulled off his man and was making a great run in behind for the ball to be laid off to him but Owen his head was down he was intent on solo and he was intent on getting by the men so on Curry like today actually so, picking up he gets his manager at the end of the game but worse than that he seems to have picked up an ankle injury he seemed to go with the ankle that'll teach him not to solo So two minutes left then of this second half. Okay, make more changes. Uncle Potty taking off yet another one of the nephews. Tomas O'Shea is going off. Be replaced by Barry O'Shea. He was a sub for Seamus Scanlon in the draw against Cork. A little pat on the back from Potty. As the ball is flicked over the bar Russell leads the scoring sticks that's a tremendous return a goal in six and Cooper a goal in five Carl O'Shea collects it still has all the time in the world to pick it up again ball comes off the chest of Keanu Sullivan Crowley the intended target was Cooper but it was the alertness of Owen Sexton that cut that out Both sides quite content to run down the clock. And I'm sure Cork are hoping that Brian White will very quickly put them out of their misery. Well, it's funny, while early on Brian White was allowing half fouls to go here and there, he has lost all sympathy with Cork, Jimmy. Um, he's had absolutely no sympathy with them this last 10 minutes since the, the Corkery and the Finn and Murray sends off. And the bad news for Cork is that Brian White has indicated there will be three minutes of injury time. That's what I mean. So Keith drives it out. Broken down by McGarrage. An injury out there to Morris McCarthy. As Colin Crowley from Castle Haven loses out, but still Cork maintained possession. Midfielder Nicholas Murphy. The transfer back inside to Crowley. Crowley faced by Eamon Fitzmaurice. Gerald Sullivan, and that just about sums up Cork's afternoon. And Larry Tompkins, I'm sure, is just sitting and wondering where it all went wrong. Yeah, as opposed to the Kerry point of view, apart from the sheer pleasure of, of hammering Cork um, in front of a big crowd, in front of television cameras, uh, I'm not sure this second half will have done them that much good. Go there, no. Now this is a seventh meeting between Laurie Tompkins and Paddy O'Shea and if it keeps on the way it is as I'm sure it will Paddy will have stretched his lead over Laurie that will be four wins he has Laurie is two with the one draw a month ago Brown White asked for the ball to be rubbed Colin Crowley is intent that Cork would take this free quickly Diarmuid O'Sullivan another left footed drop kick has been touched by someone on the way in so the fact that the 45 will eat up a few more seconds in the clock, two minutes left. And I'm quite sure, Peter, that Kerry couldn't have imagined a Cork struck their ninth wide, that it would have been just as easy as it has turned out. No, they had, they had no idea. And But in fairness to the game, uh, very professionally, right from the first minute, I mean, it was a point a minute, Jimmy, for the first four or five minutes. They signaled their intention from early on. They put down a marker. And from that on, Cork were facing the game. The frustration was increasing, and the pressure that Kerry uh, managed to put on both midfielders and forwards meant that the ball going wasn't great. I still look at that pass that Aidan McGarrish tried to thread through to his fellow substitute, John Crowley. But it's really a training session out there, and the side in Cook Park is almost funereal at the moment. The 
Thank you, the raise being full, sir. Is that someone found an indicator of brown white to put everyone out of their misery? David O'Sullivan claims a 45, but when your luck's out, your luck is certainly out. And that's, that actually sums up Cork. They put themselves around with things that they can do absolutely nothing about, and their mind hasn't been on the game at all. Well, I think that occurred because Kerry's year class early on, Jimmy, put Cork in the bottom. Young Quill then, just running down the clock, Darrow Shea, and you've got to pinch yourself to remember that it's an all this is a set all in the And Kerry, fire another ball in, off the goes. Nothing wrong at all. In the next two seven to court. And Brian White puts the work for court team. And Sadie will be remembered not for the exploits of that young man there who had a tremendous game today.